Oh, you are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. You'll never know, son, how much I need you. Please don't take my sunshine away. I thought you were talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> you like the sun, soul. <laughs> okay. This is true. And we can add being in the sun now as part of, the, of a healthy lifestyle because now new evidence confirms that exposure to the sun in appropriate amounts has many health benefits unrelated to vitamin D production. And the surprise that just came out is that the UVB rays from the sun are as healthy as the vitamin D. Oh, yeah, uh, and a lot more. So actually, there's no better way to get vitamin D than from sunshine. So if you think taking a capsule is going to take the place of what the sun does with all those frequencies of light, you got a, a rude awakening coming. You know, this uh, reminds me of eating a whole food, you know, like a whole orange mm -hmm. compared to a glass of orange juice. So or it's an like extract the, of it of some So kind. the whole sun is compared to just taking a vitamin D capsule. Right. Well, it's, it's totally different. And when we look at, at some of the things that vitamin D, or I mean, of what the sun does that vitamin D doesn't, it's really impressive. We're looking at things like seasonal affective disorder. Uh, the rays of the sun do a lot to improve our mood, and it, it, it's and it makes endorphins. A lot come of out. people get depressed in the winter time or when they live in climates like Alaska or something. Right, and if you had more sunlight, like uh, like they would like to have in places like Seattle and Alaska, there would be a lot less of this kind of problem going on. So, what's the difference with the vit with um, the blood pressure and how the whole sun affects the blood pressure? Ra Mm -hmm. better than vitamin D alone. Yeah, that's that's a good story. And it actually comes from a study that was done at the University of Edinburgh and was presented at one of the investigative dermatology conferences in May of 2013. And basically what they had was 34 uh, patients in this study. And they were all exposed to a tanning booth with UVB rays in it for about 20 minutes on two occasions. And what they found from that is that when the people who were in one group were exposed to the light plus the heat, the UVB light plus the heat, that there was a drop in blood pressure. And they thought that was related to an increase in the production of nitric oxide, which I'll talk about in a minute. But in the second group, what happened is they blocked the UVB rays and just gave the heat from the lamp. And in those people, there was no drop in blood pressure about an hour later. The nitric oxide is a chemical that's released by blood vessel walls uh, that causes an instant dilation of the blood vessel itself. And when blood vessels dilate up, they become easier for uh, the heart to pump blood through them rather than thinking of a very narrow hole through which it takes a lot of pressure to push blood through. One thing that I wanted to bring up here as an aside while you were talking about the tanning booth mm -hmm. is that if you do, do choose to use a tanning booth, say in the, in the wintertime or something, use an electronic tanning booth as opposed to a magnetic tanning booth. Right. It avoids those EMF fields that we're now finding are a pretty serious thing. Just because we don't know about something doesn't make it safe. A lot of the time in medicine, we don't understand something. We just throw it out, much like when we threw out the role of spirit and healing a couple hundred years ago when Newton brought in really uh, the kind of uh, physics, that Newtonian physics that we became anchored in. So there's some other things that the sun helps with that vitamin D um, doesn't doesn't really help with besides mm -hmm. seasonal affective disorder, right? So like with skin disorders, for example, uh -huh. and melatonin, uh -huh. and um, what else? Well, we're looking at, at, at some skin disorders like like uh, psoriasis and vitiligo that are helped by that. And, and eczema. And eczema. And as you're bringing up uh, that there are other things that are affected by that as well, uh, we're talking about things like uh, like melanoma. You would think that melanoma, because everybody says stay out of the sun to uh, keep from getting skin cancers, they're talking about squamous cell cancers and about basal cell cancers. But melanoma actually has a lower risk in people who have a higher vitamin D level. And what's kind of interesting about the melanoma, usually people get it in a part of their body that's not exposed to the sun. Right. So I wouldn't say don't, uh, I would say it, it's a good idea to get burned because there you may stimulate the production of melanoma. But it's not but a good you, idea to get burned. No, don't get, don't get burned because it causes all kinds of things to go wrong in your body. But it can also help with MS and scleroderma. It can. Uh, and and it, it prevents cancers. I mean, you're looking at the vitamin D levels. Uh, breast, colon, and uh, prostate cancers, they're very important. 
uh, and, and are associated with a much lower risk for getting them and a better prognosis if you have it. I also like to add here that if you are going to be out in the sun for a lengthy period of time, that it's you might want to wear some sort of a sunscreen. But the commercial sunscreens you have mm. to be very careful of because they can be very toxic. And some of them, when the sun ray, sun's rays hit the sunscreen, they can actually cause skin cancer. So there are some safe products. Um, actually, I have some listed on my list on Vicki's Corner on drsaputo.com. If right. you put in safe skincare products, um, I have a couple on my list. Basically, the ones that have zinc oxide in them. <laughs> and the ones that I prefer um, have zinc oxide with some other oils and things that make them uh, so that they don't go on all thick and white like a lifeguard. But I'm really opposed to nanoparticles. And you can learn on Vicki's Corner why not to use nanoparticles either. Right. So this whole business of vitamin D gets complicated. You can't get what, you, what you're getting from sunlight from a capsule. It's just that simple. And so we should be taking care to, to be as close to nature as we can in every way. We should be focusing on lifestyle medicine, the diet, exercise, stress, sleep, uh, sun exposure, keeping our weight right, and avoiding toxic chemicals. I also thought the statistic about reducing the blood pressure compared to the risk of skin cancer was interesting because it's 80 to 1. Exactly. So you've got a big advantage in having a lower blood pressure because the lower blood pressure is what causes the heart attack, strokes, and other kinds of things that we don't want. But keep in mind that this study was a small study. It only measured it for one hour uh, after uh, exposure to sunlight. So it's a tip-off that tells us there's more to it than we think. You're not going to get sunshine in a capsule. You have to get sunshine <laughs> outside. <laughs>